Hi everybody, um, welcome. My name is Katrin, and uh, at the moment you're tuned in to KISS, Keto at Simple for Success. Um, and I'm going to talk um, a little bit about the basics of what KISS is, um, the sort of principles behind it, uh, why it came into being, uh, and a little bit about how to um, start your journey if you're just starting um, a journey into uh, the keto lifestyle. So hopefully, um, if I give it a couple of seconds, a few people will um, join me uh, with their questions because obviously a live Q&A wouldn't be a live Q&A without some questions. Um, but I'm going to kick straight off with a little bit of, a, of an introduction so you understand who I am and, and how I come to be sat in front of your screen today. Um, well, my journey actually starts in uh, 2016 um, when I was overweight and not very well and, and headed off to my GP with a, with a skin condition to, to leave with a, a diagnosis of, of type, hi, I got watch uh, uh, type 2 diabetes. So um, very difficult time. I was very lucky though that that, that doctor was quite enlightened and um, sort of put me on the path to looking at a low carb lifestyle um, and eventually a, a keto lifestyle. Um, so I was very, very lucky uh, that I had some advice that um, my entire metabolic disorder and, and my entire way of being uh, was being impacted by carbs. So I was very lucky to find out that information to be able to go away and, and sort it out. Um, so fast forward until um, this Christmas just gone. Um, I put together um, a, a plan, a, a trial plan um, for 60 people to actually trial the way I eat for, for 28 days. Um, now, so many people had asked me to write down what I was doing that I got fed up of doing it for people. So, so I did it once and then gave it to everybody. Um, during the trial, uh, those people enjoyed it, lost loads of weight. Um, but more importantly, I, I really learned um, about how you actually support other people through this journey and it's not as simple as as it may seem so I've learned a lot so um, the plan is um, to turn that trial data and the prototype plan into something really really special for for people and in the meantime to to launch this platform this community for people who are are learning um, and who are beginning the journey to get some uh, some simple advice and some really clear and um, evidence-based information about keto. Hi, everybody. Um, and hopefully to, to find a way of, of making it work for them. So, so that's really um, what it's all about. Um, and I hope that, that um, this evening I can give you some, you know, just some basics about how it works. So, I got a pen and paper here because uh, my memory is, is pretty good. Um, however, I can't remember everything I wanted to, to say to everybody. Um, so the first thing then, what um, what is ketosis? Well, this is a really, really important thing. And this, this is the whole reason that this, this diet works so well. Um, ketosis is the state the body drops into when it is, has no sugar um, in the body to, to burn. Um, when there is no sugar coming in from the diet, so either sugar, refined carbohydrates, or even even whole grains and things, once that that sort of thing stop can, can, stops coming into the diet, um, then the body has to find another fuel source. Um, now, obviously, the body is designed to survive, um, and our survival mechanism is once that sugar is gone to actually store um, and, and burn our body fat. So what ketosis is about is actually removing carbohydrate from the diet so that our body goes into ketosis and uses our stored body fat as a fuel source. Now, it's pretty logical how that helps with weight loss. Um, obviously, what we want to do is access the stored fat that we have on our, our body and burn it. That, that's the whole point of, of any diet um, but why this diet works so well is that there is a hormone which actually has complete control over whether we're storing fat or whether we're burning fat and that hormone is called insulin 
Now, insulin is secreted by the pancreas when we have carbohydrates in our blood. So when we eat something that has carbohydrates in, um, our blood sugar increases as those sugars hit the blood. And in response to this, our pancreas actually produces insulin, which then pushes that blood sugar into our cells, first of all as a fuel source, but any ex excess carbohydrate is actually stored as fat. Now, when insulin is around, our body is storing. We have to wait for insulin, insulin to drop down before we can actually start burning fat because when insulin's around, we're in a storing mode. So we need to remove or completely reduce the amount of insulin that we're secreting in order to access this stored body fat. If you are watching, feel free to comment, by the way. I can see your comments scrolling up the, the, um, the, the side of my screen. So if you've got any comments or you just want to say hello to me or whatever, then please do, do put comments on because I can see them. Um, so why ketosis then? Why is this so um, useful to, to us? Well, first of all, ketosis allows us direct access to our burning our body fat. So that's the big, big thing. But there's a couple of other things that makes being in ketosis help us to lose weight. Now, the big one for me and a big one for a lot of people I speak to is ketones. So the bod the, these molecules that are made when our body fat is broken down by the liver are called ketone bodies. Now, one of the things that happens when we have a, a, a blood circulating ketone level is it actually suppresses appetite. Now, again, if we're looking to lose weight, control what we're eating, start to learn not to um, sort of binge eat or snack or anything else, getting control over our hunger is a big, big thing. So the appetite suppression and the control that we feel when we're in ketosis is one of the major tools that we use um, to actually learn how to eat instinctively, learn how to eat what our body needs and get more control over what we're actually doing. So, so that's a biggie. Okay, so the other reason that we use ketosis, oh, sorry, just getting myself comfy here. The other reason that we use ketosis is that it's a very healthy state of, of being as well. So not only do you get the appetite suppression, but you also get the other amazing side effects of these ketone bodies, which is increased energy, um, decreased sort of uh, low moods and, and um, decreased levels of, of, sort of low blood sugar and things like that. So we actually spend the day not just not feeling hungry, but also feeling very energetic, um, very capable and generally very, very good. So all in all then, using uh, ketosis as the tool is really, really handy when what we're trying to do is gain control over what we eat lose weight and get on with our lives which is which is the the biggie isn't it it's having that energy to get on with the things that you want to do and be motivated um to do those things so lots of reasons that that we use ketosis and and for me um i had a metabolic disorder that was all to do with really really high levels of insulin and insulin resistance now what i needed to do was give my body a break from all this insulin and the only way to do that is to stop eating carbohydrate. So um, for me, it instantly um, put a, a 180 turn on the metabolic disorder that I had. Um, within four weeks, I had normal blood sugars um, and obviously the weight just started dropping off. Not to say that it was a complete um, success every week. I had lots of weeks where I, I was a little bit frustrated, but luckily I stuck with it and trusted the process and, and here I am. Okay, so the next thing then, why do I call it Keto It's Simple for success? Well, anyone who's been in any other keto groups will understand um, that there is so much conflicting information about keto and, and the keto diet. Some people are, are tracking things and weighing and measuring and hitting targets and, and all these things. Um, that never worked for me. I didn't find it sustainable. It was just too complicated. Um, so when I wrote this plan and, and when I talk to people about eating um, a, a ketogenic diet, I try to keep things as simple as possible. Now, the simplest way of doing that is to not eat things that could actually throw you out of ketosis. So what you'll find if you look in the group files is the foods there are ketogenic food. They're the type of food that you would struggle to eat too much of, 
they're foods that you can feel safe to, to uh, use in your food um, and stay in a ketogenic state. Hi, Joy. <laughs> nice to have you here. <laughs> yeah, so um, like I said, the, the food in the food list, what I've tried to do is keep it as simple as possible and actually just put in things there that you'll be able to find in your local supermarket. There's nothing there that you're going to be panicked about where you're going to find it. It's all very simple. Um, you'll also see that there's a simple kiss plate. Uh, the KISS plate shows you what um, a plate of food looks like when you eat ketogenically, shows you the moderate um, amount of protein, the green vegetables and the natural fats. So it gives you an idea of what a, a very simple plate of food would look like. Obviously, what protein you, you use and what veg is completely down to you. But it gives you an idea um, of what a plate of food looks like. It's so much easier than trying to weigh your food, use calculators, use apps, spend an hour researching your food before you can sit down and enjoy it. Um, so that's that's why I've you know aimed this really at being as simple as possible, because in, in reality, the people who are sustaining and maintaining ketosis long term are not tracking everything they put in their mouth. That's impossible. How do you sustain that day after day, meal after meal, week after week? It, it doesn't fit into life. So hopefully when you see the, the food lists, when you see the demonstration day, when you see the plate, you will understand that this can be really simple. What we're doing is we're not eating carbs, we're eating moderate amounts of fatty protein, we put in a little bit of veg on the side and then we're covering it all in a nice fatty sauce or a dressing. But this is it. It, it is that complicated. That There's nothing more to it. It's, it's not brain surgery. And hopefully we can reassure you um, that it can be really, really simple. OK, so why did I put for success? Well, we're all here for different reasons. And I think that it's really shallow to assume that we're all here for weight loss or, or to get into those pair of jeans or, or for summer holidays. I think there's a lot of reasons that, that people do um, come to keto. For me, I had to regain my health. I was so unhealthy. I was 35 years old. I'm sure you've seen the photo of me today, looking about 50. Um, I really needed to, to regain my health and, and to get back to the sort of fit um, and happy and healthy young mum that, that I was. Um, so that was why I did it. Obviously, getting slimmer was a bonus. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the fact that I'm in a size small clothes, that's great. However, that's what wasn't my initial reason for coming to keto. And I, I know there's a lot of people here that are here for, for fertility reasons, for health reasons, even for mental health reasons. It's not all about weight. Weight loss is, is that added bonus that you get from completely healing the body um, through eating amazing whole uh, you know nutrient dense foods um so yeah it's 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 as if the transformation that happens on the outside slowly starts to show um everywhere else i mean that the other way around by the way <laughs> the transformation that happens inside starts to come out until you're literally glowing with it and feeling happy and healthy and and achieving the things that you want to achieve um, so I hope that that gives you an idea of why it's keto. It's simple for success. OK, so moving on then. So why choose to listen to me? OK, first of all, I do not agree that we need to be hungry ever. Um, when the body is hungry, it's, it's normally either a craving or it is actually hungry. Um, and I think that once we have control over our sugar cravings, once we have ditched the sweeteners and the processed food and all those things that are actually designed to make us addicts, and that, that's true, the, the, the food industry puts things in our food to make sure that we keep buying it. Once we remove those things and we go back to our body's natural state, the body's natural state is one of equilibrium. It's always looking to stay the same. It's always looking to find your healthy balance. So you will be able to achieve that. You will be able to self-regulate how much food you eat and when, as soon as you get rid of all those products and all that, that stuff in your food um, that, that is actually making you, you addicted to it. And then 
you can eat whenever you are hungry. You don't have to go hungry. There's no enforced fasting. There's no, um, you know, going to bed starving hungry or anything like that. It's, it, it, that doesn't need to be the case. We can trust our hunger when, when we're following this, this particular plan. Um, and that's why some of the things that you'll see in other ketogenic diets aren't here. Um, and that, that's because they, they cause those, those hunger cravings and things like that. Okay, so the next thing is that I am really keen to introduce nutrient-dense foods to people. So um, what you'll see is that the foods that we, we are eating are um, the best quality that we can afford. Um, they're nutrient-dense, so we're talking about good quality meats, good quality eggs, fantastic green vegetables, fantastic healthy fats. Um, we talk about, well, I'm becoming more interested in fermented food, in organ meats, um, and things where you really, really, really do get um, the sort of nutrition that we should have all, always had um, in our diet. So um, what you'll see here is um, people who are really, really interested in, in building their bodies back into the best version of itself that it can possibly be. So that's another reason to stick around because we really, really do like our food here. Um, another thing, feel energetic. Ketosis is an awesome state to be in. Um, if anyone's deep, deep in ketosis like I am at the moment, you'll understand that we could do this all night. I could literally chat to you and keep going and going and going and going because the energy is, is just amazing. Um, and that's because of one of the ketone bodies that's, that's feeding my brain right now. Okie dokie. So with KISS, what we're trying to do is maintain a person's metabolism. Now, you will see people talking about calorie deficits and that calories count and that keto works in the same way as every other diet. No, absolutely not. Keto is, is just our natural way of eating. Um, it's instinctual. It's things that we would have found in our normal environment when we were evolving these brains and these bodies. Um, it's not about calorie deficit. It's about taking us back to a place of health. And that does not require us to starve our bodies. In fact, completely the opposite. We're looking to fuel our body properly so that our body isn't craving more and more and more food because it's getting its nutrition, it's getting its calories, it's getting its fat. It's completely, you know, the metabolism is, is fired up and, and raring to go and you're lovely and warm and energetic and you can keep going and going. Um, so we're here to maintain metabolism. We don't um, support calorie deficits in any way. Uh, they don't work long term. None of the studies ever done have shown that this, they work long term. Um, whereas we know that returning the body to its natural state while maintaining our metabolism through eating enough calories and eating fat is maintained long term. So that's another reason to, to keep tuned in um, because we're looking to actually improve people's metabolism um, and make them make them more muscular make them more lean um, and, and build you up um, as well as shedding that excess body fat um, so that's that's a really key thing that that differentiates kiss from a lot of the other things that, that you will be listening to um, okay so the big one then um, what you'll see is there's no weighing of food and I don't track anything. Um, well, I do sometimes, but only to reassure people when they don't believe me um, what I'm eating or, or just to, to give people an idea of, of where we're at and, and what I'm doing. Um, so I have about four different keto apps downloaded on my phone. They all give me different readouts for carbs, protein, <laughs> fat. They all tell me to eat different amounts of calories. Um, so... As you can imagine, not in, entirely convinced that any of them have any idea how to help me as an individual to, to eat better. Um, do they help to begin with? Maybe. Um, however, I think in terms of sustainability, if you're looking to make this a lifestyle, what you need to do is learn to eat keto. That, that's, that's it, really. You need to learn what a plate of food looks like, what a shopping um, list looks like, what a day's meals look like. Those are the sorts of things. They're the tools that you're actually going to need long term to make this just a normal thing that you do. Um, 
sitting down with an app and inputting every gram of every ingredient of every fancy fiddly recipe that you find on the internet is only going to last so long. Um, so what I would say is do, do consider um, just learning the tools so that you can do this yourself. Okie dokie. So hopefully we'll have more questions in a minute. My throat's gone all dry. <coughs> Okie dokie. So what do we eat then? Well, we eat stuff that was alive. We eat stuff that came from a farm or a tree or a bush or the ground um, and that was alive. And I think that's really, really important. Our food comes from farms, not from factories. And that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, our food grows above the ground um, and had sunshine on it. Um, so that's another thing. So in terms of what you're going to put in your shopping trolley, usually I can get away with only one or two aisles in the supermarket and I'm, I'm done. So the first thing, the, the usual aisle is, is the, the fruit and veg aisle, or as you call it in the States, the produce aisles. And I spend a lot of time there. Um, I really like things that are leafy, green, really nutrient dense. Hi. Oh, Nicola, as soon as this, as soon as this finished, I absolutely will send you the plan. Of course I will. Um, like I said, it's in development. It was in, it's the trial is finished. I've got all the data and I'm writing the plan. It's really, really not going to be long. So I will be sending that to people. Obviously, hopefully it'll spread all the way across the world. Who knows? Um, yeah. So in the, the fruit and veg aisles or the produce aisles, as you call them in the States, um, I'm always looking for things that are dark green. The darker the color, the more that the, the more sunshine that that um, product is seen. Um, and it's always really good to, to find things that are really, really dark green. So I'm looking at uh, my cruciferous vegetables, you know, my, my kale, my, ugh, I don't eat it, but you can, um, broccoli, cauliflower, um, spinach. I'm looking at celery. I'm looking at lettuces, anything that's a leaf is amazing, um, really, really nutrient dense, really low in carb, and to be honest, you can't really eat too much of it. Um, it's, it's, the nutrient profile is fantastic, um, and I think you've got to eat something like three pounds of spinach um, to, to get any significant amount of carb. So just, just eat the stuff, it's amazing, it's really, really good for you, makes you feel fantastic, um, and you can add it for, for flavor and taste um, and fiber and everything else. So green leafy vegetables are something that I've never limited, um, I've never worried about them, they're, they're just there. Um, so definitely loads of them. Other things, you can add in a little bit of colour in terms of a small amount of peppers, um, some radishes, things like that. But I always think that if your plate is really, really green, then you're not going to go far wrong. The only thing that might trip you up is things like peas. Um, because actually peas are, are sweet, meaning they're high in sugar. Um, so that sort of thing I would I would steer clear of. However, um, if it's a green leaf, you can probably eat it. Um, that doesn't mean go foraging for all so sorts of leaves, but if it's in the supermarket, it's probably safe. Um, okay, so that's that. Then I move on to um, the meat, meat, poultry, and fish. Now, as long as it's not covered in breadcrumbs or marinades um, or batter or, or those sorts of things, um, meat is usually fine. Now, I always go for fatty cuts. Not only are they better for keto because of you know we eat high fat, but they're also cheaper. So I always look for nice fatty cuts of, of meat, poultry, fish, my oily fish, my salmon, things like that. Um, but you can go nuts. Um, just have a look what, what the butcher section or, or the, the deli counter has there in terms of some nice um, fresh meat or even frozen, doesn't really matter, um, and see what you can find. Obviously, the better quality you can, you can find, the, the better it's gonna be. Um, for example, if you can fi find organic, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, you're looking at probably the most nutritious um, source of food that you could probably find um, because there's those um, fantastic um, vitamins in the fat, but also that there's not so many hormones and, and things like that. So fantastic um, to, to try and find the best quality that you can. However, keto has to be sustainable. 
um, and I do eat a lot of meat. So for me, there's no way that I would be able to afford everything organic and grass fed. So it's all about balance and finding out what you can you can afford. So after I've gone past the, the meat, the next place that I go to is the dairy aisle. Um, now, again, some people have issues with dairy, but personally, I don't. So what I say to people is if you normally eat dairy, have a go. If you seem to be having issues, not being able to lose weight or feeling bloated or something like that, you may look at dairy um, as, as the culprit. But personally, I have no problems with it at all. Hello. <laughs> um, so I have no problems. So what do I buy in the dairy section? Well, the first thing I'm always looking for is it needs to be full fat. Anything that has the fat removed will have a greater proportion of carbohydrate. So what you're looking for is your full fat natural cheeses. Think cheddar, brie, um, all those lovely things that you can find in, in the cheese aisle. Um, you're looking for um, what you call heavy cream in the US. We call it double cream in the UK. Uh, so again, we're looking for things that are high in fat, low in carbohydrate, and the least number of processes done to it as possible. So we're looking for things like butter, uh, real butter, um, no spreads, butter, cream, um, <laughs> um, cheese, um, and things like that. Milk is quite high in carbohydrates in, in terms of a ketogenic lifestyle. So if you're looking for something to whiten your coffee with, I would definitely go down the, the route of, of the heavy cream instead. Um, yeah, and other than that, you can look at um, sort of full fat Greek yogurt and things like that. So always look to see that it's not flavored, there's no additives, and all it is is the natural full fat product. You can't go far wrong if, if that's the case. Um, so that's what I do in, in dairy. And I do lean quite heavily on dairy and you'll, you'll see lots of um, butter and cream on my food. Um, so after dairy then, the other things that we're looking for is things like eggs. Again, I buy free range eggs. I don't find them too uneconomical to buy um, and obviously far, far better for chickens and for you. Um, so free range eggs. The other thing is fat. Now, um, there's no such thing as a low fat keto lifestyle. Uh, keto is 75% or more, in fact, of calories coming from natural fat. So fat is definitely something that if you're going to invest in good food, this is may where you may want to invest it. So, for example, some of the fats that I use day in, day out would be butter, coconut oil. Um, I use olive oil a lot. Um, I use lard. And I also, and this is the cheapest fat there is, I use the fat that comes off the meat when I'm cooking it. So for example, if you're cooking a nice joint of meat for your, for your roast dinner, then there is nothing better than frying up your cabbage and your greens in the fat from that meat. Once you start doing that, there's no going back. You won't be able to, to stop eating keto because it's an absolute game changer when you start using uh, proper beef drippings or, or, or lamb drippings to, to actually cook your veg in. It's absolutely amazing. So, so yeah, lots of fat. Um, you can use avocados, avocado oil. There's things like nuts and seeds. Now, when we talk about nuts, I am actually talking about real nuts. And unfortunately, neither peanuts or cashews are nuts. So you just need to be aware that peanuts and cashews are both uh, not nuts and they can be higher in carbs and also for some people can be inflammatory. So if you are eating peanuts and, and not losing weight, then potentially that might be another thing that you could have a look at. Now, in terms of nuts, make sure you're getting them um, without any sort of sugar coating or anything like that on. Um, what I would say is to make sure the skins are on um, as far as possible um, for the added fiber. But nuts and seeds are fantastic. And what you'll see is this in the group files is actually a, a recipe for something called flaxseed bread. Now, for anyone who's missing bread, that's what you've got to get the hang of because it's fantastic. It takes literally three minutes to put together and cook and be ready to eat. So if you're looking for bread, then then that's definitely something. Do you dump all your, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, you can do. Um, I'd have a bit of a mix. <laughs> 
in my fridge because I'm always cooking something different. But yeah, absolutely. I just pop it in a, a, a little container and, and pop it in the fridge. Um, fat does, does last for a, a few days. Um, so, so there's no problem there. I definitely, definitely keep it. Um, but I'm, I'm very much of a waste not, want not. So um, if it's a bone, it'll go in my bone broth. If it's fat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. The meat's going to get eaten. So there's nothing left. Um, so yeah, definitely you can definitely keep those those um, those drippings. They're fantastic. Um, and my mum's watching now, and and she'll remember that my gran always used to talk about, and my mum used to talk about having drippings on bread um, for uh, for tea. And I'm sure at the time they thought it was the drippings that were causing the issues, but it was definitely the bread. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving forward, moving forward. That's a little nostalgic little uh, thing there. Okie dokie. So next thing then, what else uh, would we have? Well, life wouldn't be worth living if it wasn't for a little spice. So um, definitely some of the things that I use to flavor my food. I use Himalayan pink salt. Not only does it have a fantastic um, amount of trace minerals in it, which which we need when we're in ketosis, um, but also it tastes really nice. So I use a lot of, of salt on food. I use black pepper. I use chili powder, cumin powder, uh, lots of different things. One of the things that you do need to be aware of is some spices are quite high in carbs. Um, for example, uh, turmeric is a root. Um, so just to be aware uh, that if you are using spices, it's absolutely fine. But what we wouldn't do is put lots and lots and lots and lots of spices in without considering whether they, they were really high in carbs or not. So, so don't worry. Your food doesn't have to be flavorless. Just what I'm saying is be aware that some are, are roots and, and things and, and fruits and things like that, whereas others are seeds and far less um, high in carbohydrates. So just be aware. The other thing to watch is, is um, uh, garlic. Um, garlic is, is one gram of carbohydrate per clove. So make sure that when you're using garlic, you're not going overboard. And I love garlic, so I've just got to make sure that when I do use garlic, I make loads and loads of servings of it and don't eat it all in one sitting. Um, so yeah, so things like that, just to be aware um, that our food should be mostly our, our fatty cuts of meat, our green vegetables and our healthy fats. And then flavoring is absolutely fine. And you'll, you'll see some of our fantastic cooks um, in the group showing their culinary prowess and uh, giving you some top tips and ideas of, of what um, you can put together uh, when you're using these foods. Okay, so what don't we eat then? If we do eat these foods, what, what don't we eat? Well, the main things that we're looking to avoid are sugars, fruit, um, grains, and beans, legumes, and things like that. Um, so we're talking about refined carbohydrates, but also unrefined carbohydrates as well. Um, unfortunately, despite what the food industry tell us, once those carbohydrates hit the blood, they are sugar. Um, they're all sugar. Uh, the body doesn't see them particularly any differently. Um, so it's really, really important that when we when we do a ketogenic lifestyle, that we understand uh, that carbohydrates are the key to unlocking our body's fat stores. And they are also the key to switching off cravings. When you still have carbohydrates in the diet, you will still crave them. When they're gone completely, you won't. Um, and that is that's the, the truth of the matter. So very, very important that we understand what we don't eat. Um, things that people wouldn't think about um, that contain carbs, jarred sauces, cooking sauces, um, seasoning mixes, that sort of thing. Just be really, really aware that unfortunately, um, when it comes from a factory, carbohydrates are usually put in. And if it's not carbohydrates, it's something even worse. Um, so just to be aware that processed food is, is probably the number one place that you're going to find hidden carbs. And it's also the number one place that you're going to find things that you shouldn't be eating. Um, now on the KISS plan, and like other um, keto versions, I actually removed sweeteners um, this is due to the trial. What I found on the trial is that um, people were still craving things, they were still getting hungry, and they weren't embracing the ketogenic lifestyle because of the amount of sweeteners still in the diet. So they're gone, 
sorry. Um, but they're gone for good, really good reason. Um, and what you'll find is without the, the sugar and the sweeteners in the diet, um, other food will start to taste far, far better. Um, so your taste will change and you'll actually really start to enjoy some of the other foods that aren't as, as sugary and sweet. There's no such thing as a sweet tooth. There's no such thing as people who um, like sweet stuff more than others. Sugar has a complete um, and utter control over the brain while it's in the in the in the body and in the bloodstream. If you remove sugar, not only do you um, switch off the, the the mental cravings, but the bacteria in your gut that has been feeding off the sugar and and is actually causing you to crave the sugar will die off, and you replace that bacteria with bacteria that prefers savoury food. So um, so yeah, definitely all in all, just get rid of the sugar and the sweeteners all in one go, and it's done. It takes a couple of days and then suddenly you're free um, and there's nothing quite like being free of food. It, it, it is a very liberating feeling completely. Okie dokie. So what else to avoid? Root vegetables, kind of um, obvious, kind of not. Um, so you've got things like your potatoes, carrots, parsnips, they're all very sweet. And they're sweet for a reason, it's because they're high in carbohydrate. Um, but just keep an eye. Some roots are far less um, heavy in carbs than others, but just as, a, as an easy way of looking at it, if it grows below the ground, it's normally the plant's carbohydrate store. A root, a tuber, um, a bulb, all these things are carbohydrate stores. So just just be aware um, of the veg you buy and an easy way to go about it is most vast majority of our veg should have grown above ground, should be green. Um, and that's easy then to, to get that right. Um, other things then, processed food. Yeah, obviously, like we've mentioned, processed food, absolutely um, full of sugar, full of MSG, full of sweeteners and full of all the fats that, that actually do cause um, issues with it, things like um, heart disease and, and cholesterol. So you want to stay away from them uh, and you want to eat natural um, fats and natural food. Okie dokie. So we talked a little bit about the KISS plate. So after this, please do go in the files and have a look at the KISS plate. It's a really easy visual um, representation of what a decent um, plate of food would, would look like. Now, I'm ta not talking about trough. I'm talking about a normal dinner plate size of food. Um, we're talking about sort of um, palm-sized portions of, of, of meat. Uh, we're talking about plenty of greens. Like I said, you can't really overeat uh, leafy greens. It's kind of impossible. And the, the main thing is that we are looking for added fat on that meal. There is no such thing as low fat keto. That, that doesn't exist. That, that's called being very hungry. Um, so the fat needs to be there. Now the fat obviously comes from the meat, but we do also need to add fat to our vegetables um, in terms of dressings and sauces. Um, and we can cook in those natural fats as well. Now what that fat does, it keeps you full. It keeps you energetic. It um, helps the body to, to produce ketones especially things like butter coconut oil things like that they're very ketogenic uh, and keep you feeling energetic as well so definitely want to be adding fat um, the fat on your meat is just simply not going to be enough you do have to add fat to your meals in order to not be snacking in order to get to your next meal still really you know satiated and, and able to control um, those those sort of feeding and and that that sort of eating process at the next meal. So very, very important that the fat is there. Okie dokie. So what does a KISS day look like? I'm trying to get through this now because I know I've got to go do another live video in a minute. So the, the KISS day, to begin with, I think it's really important that we can continue with our, our normal three meals a day. Basically because it's easier to get our head around the fact that we have breakfast, lunch and, and dinner or tea, as you call it in Wales. Um, it, it's much easier. However, there will come a time when eating three large meals a day simply becomes too much. And you, and you do sometimes reduce that down to, to twice or, or even once if, if you're getting really, really good meals. Um, but to start off with, I think three meals a day. Now, you're looking to, to be full. You're looking to eat plenty on those meals. And, and like I said, they need to, to have that moderate protein, high fat, and you can add veg in you know, at, at your leisure and as much as you like. Um, but you're looking for those three meals. Now, we don't snack. 
Um, and the reason that we don't snack is we, we release insulin every time we eat. Even when we're eating KISS foods, even when we're just eating um, butter, we still produce tiny amounts of insulin every time we eat. Now, the whole game that we're playing is keeping insulin low because that allows fat to be released from fat cells. So the whole day we're thinking about how do we keep insulin low? And the way we do that is we stop spiking insulin so many times and we stop spiking it so much. So the first way we stop spiking it so much is obviously by taking carbohydrates out of our meals. The way we stop spiking it so often is we stop eating so often. And the first thing to do, and the first thing that needs to go, is snacks. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's, so, it's so easy, isn't it? I mean, it's um, when you think about it, how to get a, fat, a, a high fat meal is, is just to get some veg. Um, and, and fry it up in butter or coconut oil or, or olive oil and, and, and you're done. Um, and it's really, really satisfying and, and satiating. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, so a kiss, a kiss day looks initially like a normal day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, we take out the snacks. You don't, you don't need snacks. Um, if you do need snacks and you're hungry, you probably didn't eat enough on the previous meal. So just make a mental note. Um, don't kick yourself, just eat, but just be aware that next time you put that meal together or next or at the next meal, you probably need a little bit more. And the more is fat. You probably need more fat because fat is incredibly satisfying. It's nine calories per gram. It keeps you, your metabolism fired up. So if we're adding anything to our meals, it, it should be fat and that will keep us going far longer and far better than, than adding protein or definitely not adding carbs we, we're not going to do that so if you are still snacking that's a key indicator that your meals aren't big enough once your meals are big enough believe me you won't need to snack so so that's the top tip there okie dokie so what to expect in the first week this is my last little topic um before i i leave you um well temporarily i'm coming back in a minute um so in terms of what to expect in the first week, the first couple of days, the body probably doesn't notice much, um, but it will start to actually burn through your stored sugar. Um, so you may feel that your muscles are slightly heavy, slightly tired, and you may feel hungry and you may start craving sugar, and that's your body asking you to replace that stored sugar. Now, we're not gonna do that. So what we do is we eat ketogenic food, we eat plenty of fat, we eat enough to stay um, full and satisfied, um, and that's the way that we that we do it. Um, we get through that, that first sort of initial stage. Sometimes it does mean snacking, um, and in the first week, I wouldn't say any, any, anything to anyone who, who wanted to do that. Um, so the other things to expect then, sometimes when you come off sugar, um, you can feel that you have uh, low blood sugar. It won't drop dangerously low. We, you know, unless you've got diabetes type one, uh, your body will maintain blood sugar. But if you are used to eating high levels of sugar, then obviously the new normal will be lower than you're used to. Um, so you maybe feel a little bit shaky and weak. And again, eating is the cure. Um, so again, make sure that you're eating plenty. And if you feel a little bit shaky, have something to eat. Eat ketogenic food. There's small, small amount of carbs in there, and that will just maintain your, your blood sugar perfectly well um, other things headaches a little bit of nausea some people have experienced um, and definitely people experience things like muscle cramps and things like that so things that you need to do for that is obviously replace your electrolytes now being ketogenic is a natural diuretic what that means is that it allows the body to flush water out of the cells and from between the cells very, very easily. Now, when we're flushing water through the body, we also lose minerals. Minerals come out in our urine. So we do actually need to replace those minerals because unfortunately we don't eat dirt anymore. Um, our tap water is filtered, so we lose a lot of minerals from our, our, our tap water. And also our soils are depleted, so even our vegetables and our meat are depleted of minerals as well. So unfortunately, because we're eating whole foods, um, we do need to replace these minerals in our diet. So my top tip, 
first of all, get you, make yourself some bone broth. Now, if you've never heard of it, go and look. Um, there's plenty of information on how to make bone broth, but it's fantastic because it's full of, of minerals um, and electrolytes, and it's fantastic. It helps with headaches, and it helps with all these symptoms that I'm talking about. Other things you can do is salt your food properly. So um, get some Himalayan pink salt or sea salt or gray salt or some fan fantastic trace mineral salts. Salt your food. You can also add potassium, which helps um, with with your uh, cramps and, and your muscles. So you can add potassium. The best way is a, a salt alternative called low salt normally. It's just potassium instead of sodium. So you can grab some of that, it's really cheap. And then magnesium. Now, there's a couple of ways to get magnesium. You can get them through your green veg and hopefully you're eating enough green veg to keep up with magnesium. But if you're experiencing issues with sleep, restless legs, um, if you're having cramps in your legs or your, your hands, um, then that's normally not enough magnesium. Now, you can either get um, Epsom salts and have an Epsom salt bath because the skin absorbs magnesium, or um, you can just find a magnesium supplement. And the best way, best one for, for ketogenic lifestyle is magnesium citrate. Um, and basically, you need to take enough to relieve symptoms, and that's it. Um, other than that, you should be able to get plenty from, from green vegetables. So. Those are the three things. And of course, drink. You'll be really, really thirsty. So do drink water, but make sure you're replacing electrolytes because every time you drink, you'll urinate and lose minerals. So make sure you're replacing those. Um, the last thing then, when you start producing ketones, not only do you feel it because you, you feel that energy increasing, but you do secrete ketones in your breath and in your urine and sometimes even through the skin. Now, um, you can smell them unfortunately however you'll be glad to know this is very very temporary um, and if you stay ketogenic and you stay hydrated it, it just goes away um, so it's a great sign when you do start tasting something metallic in the mouth um, that you are producing ketones but just to be reassured that it does go away um, because after a while your, your body just starts using all the ketones and you're not producing as many either um, so so definitely it'll be fine Hi, Diane. Hi, Megan. <laughs> nice to see everyone here. And, and hopefully that the people who are watching this afterwards, because I know for a lot of people in the States, this is now the middle of the day um, and really, really inconvenient. So hopefully other people are watching this um, later on. So that's what to expect in the first week. In terms of weight loss, because I know this is what you all want to know, um, in the trial, the, the average amount of... Um, I'm gonna have Two seconds, the cat's trying to get in the door. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> crazy here. Um, yeah, so in the trial, the average weight loss in the first week was six pounds, um, which is fantastic. However, in the first week, weight loss is mostly water. Um, and after that, um, people seem to burn around two pounds of fat each week from that point. Um, meaning by the end that most people had lost around 10 pounds, which is fantastic and very healthy and very sustainable. Um, so it does work. Um, and yeah, hopefully everyone gets um, plenty from it. Uh, I know certainly it was a bit of a, a life changer for me. Um, and I hope that it's going to change other lives as well. Um, so that's kind of the basics and, and the very, very um simple version of of kiss and i really hope um that you stick with us for some of the other videos that i'm going to do um i'm going to be logging off in a minute to give myself a 10 minute break before i come on and talk about the health benefits of of kiss um but i'm also doing some more videos over the next few days um they'll be live in the group They'll also be uploaded to um, YouTube. And I really hope that if you are watching this on YouTube now, um, that you subscribe to the channel um, so that you can get all the other videos that, that I'm doing. Um, I hope you use the demo day. I hope that you, if you've stalled in your weight loss, that you come into the group and you use the stall breaker plan, which is pretty hardcore, but amazing. Um, and I hope you just come and, and share with us um, share your learning and your experience so that we can all learn from you as well. Um, is there a minimum amount of protein one should eat? Yes, Cheryl, there absolutely is. Um, now, when you read the literature, um, it will definitely depend on your, your weight 
uh, your age and your activity level. However, if you want an actual number, you're looking for a minimum of around 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight per day. Um, now, that is a very achievable target. Actually, people think that uh, we need far more protein than we do. Um, but if you're eating a couple of eggs for breakfast and you're eating a couple of chicken thighs for your, for your dinner, you've done it. It, it, it's it's really um, not that difficult to achieve this protein and if you've got dairy as well and if you're eating things like broccoli um, and other sort of cruciferous vegetables then the protein is adding up quite quickly um, so in terms of, of protein as long as you're eating a moderate amount of protein that will be enough amino acids for your body to to continually to rebuild your cells, um, to grow your hair and your nails and, and for you to stay strong. So you definitely do need protein in the diet and that's why a ketogenic diet is moderate protein. It's not low, low protein because you definitely do need protein. But I think a lot of the low carb diets are very high in protein. But of course, we're not using, unless we're lifting massive amounts of weight um, every day and, and having serious muscle damage day after day after day, then our protein needs probably aren't as high as, as we think they are. And excess protein is, of course, something that the kidneys have to deal with. Um, so, yeah, moderate amounts of protein. And if your, your three meals a day each consist of some sort of protein, you're going to easily hit that. Um, so I wouldn't worry about protein too much. Um, you can go over a little bit um, and you can go under a little bit, but ultimately once you um, start eating a whole foods diet and once you're using things like the, the kiss plate to just have that, that visual eyeballing of your food and making sure that, yep, I got a bit of protein, I got natural fats, there's some greens on my plate, I've got a glass of water, you're doing it. Um, it's all there. Um, and if you're eating nutrient dense foods, then you're also hitting all those micronutrients as well. And I'm doing a video about them, so I'm not going to talk any more about micronutrients, but um, rest assured that if you're eating a variety of whole foods, you're using the foods list um, and also exploring, don't, don't be afraid of exploring other foods because I, I couldn't list them all. Um, but once you're doing that and you're getting that variety, um, then you will be hitting your, your, your minimum of protein because believe me, unless you're incredibly active uh, or sustaining muscle damage day after day, then your protein needs are probably lower than, than you think they are. So, okie dokie. Can you repeat the formula again, please? The formula. Uh, okay, <laughs> I assume you're talking about what we would add into a meal. Um, so, when we're looking at, I hope this, and if I'm wrong, Laurie, please do tell me. Um, so if we're looking at a plate of food, we're looking at a moderate um, portion of protein. So if you think you think of the palm of your hand um, as your steak or your chop or, or, or a couple of chicken thighs or, or whatever it is, um, then we're looking at um, half a plate of greens. I mean, like I said, you can't go over on greens, so, so don't worry about that. It's, it's however many greens you want. Um, and then, of course, we're looking to add natural fat. Um, now, in terms of weight, um, protein and fat uh, are maybe similar, um, fat probably slightly higher. But we're looking for fat on our protein, so we're looking for skin on chicken, we're looking for marbling in our, in our meat, uh, we're looking for you know, fatty protein, but we are also going to add fat um, in order to, to sort of keep our metabolism high and to get us to our next meal. Um, if we don't put fat on that meal and it's just a moderate um, piece of protein and some greens, you are going to get hungry. So fat is really, really important. So we're going to cook in fat. We're looking for fat on our meat. And also we're going to add either a fatty dressing or a fatty sauce onto our vegetables as well. After all that, um, then you will, you, you will be satisfied, I hope. If you're not, just go for a little bit more next time um, until you hit, hit that satisfaction because everybody's going di to be different. We're all different levels of, of metabolism. We're all different levels of activity. Um, so you've just got to start to 
trust your body um, and you can trust it as soon as those carbs and as soon as those sweeteners are out of the diet because those are the things that stop us from self-regulating our calorie intake. When they're not there, the body is very, very good at telling you what it needs. It will be hungry, you'll eat and you'll stop eating when you're full, but you, you do need to get rid of those last um, dregs of carbohydrate. But if you're still finding yourself snacking, as I said, it's probably an indication that your meals aren't big enough. Um, believe it or not, humans are not grazing animals. You can tell that by our teeth. We, we, we don't chew our cud or anything. We're not grazers. We are feasters and fasters. This is part of our makeup. You know, Every now and again, we'll have a kill. Every now and again, we'll find a bush in fruit. Um, but for days and days, we may be going without food. So we're not grazers necessarily. Um, so snacking just spikes insulin throughout the day and stops us from tapping into that body fat. So, okie dokie. Oh, for the amount of protein, sorry, Laurie. Um, so in terms of amounts of protein then, at a bare minimum, you're looking um, between 0.6 and 0.8 grams of protein per kilo of body fat per day. And I hope that helps. I think there's 2.2 pounds in every kilo, so that may help um, the, 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 the twist over for, for the Americans there. Um, yeah, for, for me, I find it very, very easy to hit my protein. I eat eggs, I eat dairy, I eat meat, I eat fish, I eat poultry, um, I eat high protein veg, even broccoli and things like that. So protein is never something that I have to worry about. Um, and I, anyone who's eating similar meals to me um, will be hitting their, their protein as well. So um, in terms of minimum, it is actually probably lower um, than, than you think it is. Um, but fat is the key. Fat is the key. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go now because in five minutes time I'm back. So I'm just going to go. I'm going to have a drink. Um, join me again in five minutes if you want to hear some more in-depth um, information about health um, and how a ketogenic lifestyle and the KISS plan could potentially um, improve different um, aspects of health. So I'm going now and I'll see you in five. Bye.